This is a new Mazda SUV. Nope, it's a pickup. <laughs> okay, let's check out the. Oops. I have no idea why it's called BT50, and I have no idea why it is still called BT50, and I absolutely have no idea why Mazda insists on making. Not making, asking others to make them a pickup truck. Probably for the Thailand market. Probably. Now the last, the previous BT50 is a Ford Ranger. This round, the BT50 is a Isuzu D Max. Right. Um, Go! Cool. Soft touch, soft touch. You know what? When we touch this, right, in an Isuzu D Max, it feels so high quality. But you touch the same thing in a Mazda, which we have different perception of Mazdas, and then suddenly it doesn't feel Mazda enough. Right, let's go. So if you remember uh, a lot of reviewers when we review the new D-Max, all of us said that how refined the interior is, how nice it is now and um, and of course we pointed it out that they have to do it that nice because uh, they entered into an agreement with Mazda to produce the BT-50, right? But somehow, I kind of felt that the D-Max was a little bit more comfortable than this. I don't remember the D-Max rear uh, hopping that much as, as, as this is, you know. Other than that, the touch points and all that is a marked improvement for D-Max, like I said earlier on, but given that we are all, we are, all of us are now accustomed to the Mazda logo, being slightly higher than the regular Japanese brands and probably slightly below that of Lexus. That's our expectations of Mazdas these days. And um, this is not one of it. Apart from these touch points, you know, the design still has a little bit of semblance to that. I know uh, Mazda wasn't supposed to spend a lot of money in this, in getting Isuzu to to, to change things or or, or having a, a very intensive uh, batch engineering cross pollination of parts so you don't get the Mazda infotainment system here uh, this one is straight up created just to hook up to your phone you know there's there's literally nothing here apart from being there as a screen ready to hook up to your stuff I don't I don't see anything here uh, the uh, the screen in between this the the counters uh, is so 2003 that uh, you know you, you just you just don't feel like it's a it's a serious bit of kit in the middle and the, the speedo counters are also very Spartan basically for, for me at least, if you want a D-Max, you go for a D-Max, provided you really wanted a Mazda on your driveway, you know. Or, you know how car thieves would work, you know, I mean, of course there are car, th there are syndicates out there that steals cars, right. You can imagine on their list, right, the number one, let's say uh, the number one, okay, this month you all must steal uh, 10 Hilux or 20 Hilux okay let's say 50 we want 50 Hilux we want uh, 20 Ford Rangers we want how many Tritons how many D Max how many Navaras I trust me the BT50 they, they wouldn't remember including BT50 in the list so pickup trucks being one of the most stolen vehicles most stolen vehicle types out there Buying a BT50 might mean that 
you're off the radar for a lot of car thieves, all right? Uh, in terms of drive, nothing special. It's like a pickup truck. Uh, I like the steering wheel leather. There are some compartments, but it's incomparable to others, you know, in terms of having, especially Hilux, you know, all the compartments, cup holders and all that. This one is pretty sedan car looking or civilian passenger car looking. Uh, rather refined, but of course this 3 liter engine from is not I don't know if Mazda is serious about the pickup truck segment, right? Probably Mazda can rethink it You know remember Nissan was very daring in taking out the leaf springs from the previous Navara maybe Mazda can look at hey, we have a wonderful 2.2 diesel that doesn't smell doesn't vibrate like this doesn't clatter like a regular diesel engine, why why can't we in put Mazda's 2.2 diesel, the excellent diesel engine, into this? Put a coil spring at the back and tell people this is this is a, a proper lifestyle pickup truck. Design more things in there. Probably a compartment that can store bags and all that at the back. Probably comes with a tonneau cover that can cover the the bed. Probably on the sides of the bed has uh, uh, you know you know like like American pickup trucks they can open the sides and put their pour ice in it put their drinks in it you know their plug points to have a beachside party or something like that like when I step out from this car the diesel fumes surrounding me in the parking lot is killing me all right and immediately I recall this batch Mazda has a has a wonderful diesel engine that doesn't produce this type of fumes and it's, it doesn't clatter and it's smooth so that would be the rethinking that if Mazda really want to conquer the pickup truck segment it is not with this kind of half effort you know like just just simply slap on a batch on another person's product and and call it a day off and oh we also have a pickup truck you know I don't think this is Mazda's way of doing things. Probably Mazda has some contracts with other car makers, some swaps, you know, that kind of arrangements that uh, Japanese car makers are, are, are is, is a common practice for Japanese car makers. Like for a number of years, the Toyota Yaris that you buy in US is the Mazda 2. And if in Japan you can buy a Mazda Ignis. You will remember this brand is, hey, isn't that a Suzuki Ignis? Yes, it's a Suzuki Ignis with a Mazda front and Mazda didn't even bother to change the brand at all. The, the model at all, pretty interesting. So all in all, this is just as good as an Isuzu D-Max, but with a more desirable brand in people's opinion because Isuzu is seen in the same ranks of probably more industrial. You see Isuzu's brand, you think not of Toyota, Nissan, Volkswagen, but you think more to uh, MAN, Scania, you know, that type of industrial brands. You think of it that way. Alright, but a lot of people did not know. Japan's first car maker is Isuzu and not Toyota, not Mazda. Isuzu is Japan's first car brand. Anyway, this is yeah, exactly the same as Isuzu D-Max, but from my memories, I kind of... Wow, a Range Rover looks small next to me. I kind of remember the D-Max is slightly more comfortable. All right, In terms of the drive, in terms of the reliability of Isuzu D-Max, the fuel efficiency is well known to be excellent. All right, So, yeah, this is a more stylish new Isuzu D-Max. And... Um, you service your car in a Mazda dealership instead of an Isuzu dealership, which is quite different in a way. All right, and you can tell people I drive a Mazda, and even the key is an Isuzu key with a Mazda logo and blazon behind. All right, this is not your usual Mazda key. All right, so like I said, it's a fantastic product from Isuzu, and there's no wrong with with Mazda doing this and styling it in line with their SUV lineups but I kind of felt that 
if Mazda is serious, they could have done more. And if they did that, that would be worth an attention. Some attention at least. Like this one now, absolute zero attention. Nobody cares, nobody asks, nobody remembers. Not even car thieves, I presume. Right? Everything's practical. Just like a pickup truck. GD3! <laughs> Don't run away, GD3! I'm coming for you! Oh, G Wagon! No, I want to chase GD3. Oh, oh. Hello, GD3. Aloha. No, this one not RS, just GT3 Sahaja. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Nope. No need. No need. No need. Never would have expected a Honda Civic going down the ramp of Gardens more slower than the Porsche GT3. Okay, 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 brick, 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 brick. Okay, okay. Go away! Oh, okay, 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 Oh, I forgot I'm reviewing the car. Yep, simple cluster, nice steering wheel, nice logo, nice design, simple everything else. Soft touch dash, just the front portion, right? The back is still hard. So it's a pretty smart, you know, just this front part is soft touch, so that when you touch it, you're like, ooh, soft dashboard. But inside here is hard. But we don't need soft touch for pickups uh, alright how's the handling really good I haven't figured out how to switch off the lane keep assist or the lane 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 departure warning and uh, the way it beeps is a bit too loud and I couldn't find like a one button situation to just off it and uh, I press these little things in the steering and they all anyway Overall, it's what a pickup is, lah, huh? It's it's a loud, big diesel that spews a lot of. Maybe it's Mazda's fault for letting me realize that there can be diesels in Malaysia that doesn't stink, doesn't smell, doesn't vibrate, doesn't make the clatter or the massive turbo lag of diesels it was Mazda's fault and now me in a Mazda uh, reacquainting with diesel I mean I maybe it's just this current state of mind because I remember driving other diesels I don't complain that much probably driven too many EVs recently and uh, been a long while since I smell any kind of fumes so oh well yeah so like I said my conclusion is still a very competent uh, pickup right it's from a very very proven uh, maker Isuzu D-Max I think when it comes to the reputation of pickups I think D-Max should be alongside uh, probably slightly or below that of the highlights but definitely alongside that what is this <sighs> bro bro this is normal daily driving yeah, I am still trying to see where can I switch that off okay I just couldn't switch it off yet
so far I don't see any button for me to, to turn that off. Alright, cheers.